Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video we're going to be making our mesh a little bit more resource friendly. Specifically we're going to do two things. First off, once a mesh stops being referred to as no longer part of the program and gets deleted, that's great except for the fact that it leaves the VBO and IBO space allocated on the GPU. So we're going to fix that. We're going to make it so that it'll delete all the stuff it leaves behind so that we don't have to wait for the program to end for all our stuff to be removed from the GPU. Second thing, let's say I create a mesh that loads, I don't know, a monkey model from, you know, from a file. That's great, it got, it creates it on the GPU, puts it there, and all's good in the world. But let's say I try to create another mesh which also uses that monkey file. Well, in our current setup, it's going to allocate a whole nother mesh, fill it up with space, and, you know, that's just, there's no point in that. We, you know, if we're going to load a model, we should reuse that data. So those are the two things we're going to take care of in this video. And I'm going to start by creating a new package. If, yeah, there it is. And I'm going to call this resource management. And, well, this is going to be the package of all the different classes we're going to use for managing resources. And our first one, starting everything off, is going to be, I'll call it, I don't know, Mesh Manager? No, it's a bad name. Um, how about this, Mesh Resources. Mesh Resource, how about that? And what this is going to do is, essentially, this is going to take over the role of having our VBO and IBO in here. And you might be wondering, well, why on earth are you moving these things over, Benny? This is silly. What, what are you doing? Here's the thing. In our setup, we're going to potentially have more than one mesh class referring to the same VBO and IBO, right? You know, because we load two monkeys, then we'll have two meshes referring to the same data. The problem is, if one of those would get collected and we had our cleanup code in the mesh class, then it would remove the VBO and IBO, and the monkey that's still around, it's not going to have valid data to draw with. So that's why we're going to have this separate class to hold them. Because this way, th we can make sure this is only cleaned up and deleted once all the meshes using those VBOs and IBOs are gone. Make sense? So, here. So I'm going to override the protected void finalize function. Because it's a function in Java, which is called whenever whenever the object is deleted in the garbage collector. And here, I'm going to call gl delete buffers on VBO, and okay, maybe I'm not. Oh, right, import. Okay, I'm going to import the lightweight Java game library package because apparently Um, there we go. <laughs> so I'm going to import the package, and now I can delete it. So, there, this is all that's going to take place. It's going to, well, it's going to get VBO and IBO, and once it's deleted, it's going to, well, get rid of them. But that doesn't solve the problem. Actually, before I go any further, I should probably create getters for these so that, you know, I can actually use them. So there, there's getters. But anyways. The... the issue, of course, with this is that we don't have... we aren't initializing them ever. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to create a construct for this. Not public. Wait. Yes, public. What am I doing? <laughs> public mesh resource. And this is going to say this is GL gen buffers, or VBOs, and same thing for IBO. So there. It's a very simple class just for a wrapper of resource management. It's going to... well, the constructor is going to create resources and the, I don't know if you want to call it destructor, but the finalized thing is going to delete the resources. Very simple. And I forgot to fix this on screen, but yeah, make sure in the finalize of the mesh resource thing, you do delete VBO and then IBO and not VBO twice, you know, that, that, that's kind of bad. So yeah, I, I, I forgot to do that on screen. There you go, just in case you were wondering. And okay, I can give her to those now. 
But now we just need to convert our mesh class into actually using them. So the mesh class is going to have a private mesh resource. Call it, I don't know, buffers? Sure, why not? So yeah, we've just wrapped all the GPU resources that our mesh is using in this little class that manages them for us, which is nice. So, yeah, when one are in our constructor, I'm just going to replace the init mesh data by do well initializing buffers. It's new mesh resource. So there, it's going to give us new GPU resources. So you know that's kind of nice. I think it's kind of nice that we have this whole wrapper class for our native resources. We don't need to worry about any complex management with, of them in the mesh class itself. We can just worry about you know dealing with the mesh. So I don't know. I like that. But anyways, we're going to need to replace everywhere we used VBO and IBO with buffers dot get VBO and get IBO. Which, you know, it's it's a small trade-off, I suppose. I don't don't think it's a huge deal. Oh, that's it. Oh, and I can get rid of this code now. Don't need to have a giant... That's interesting. Okay, not sure what that was all about, but... Yeah, don't need all that now, but... Anyways, I'm getting distracted. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to replace all that with VBO and IBO and whatnot. And now I should be able to build, and now it should run, and now all the meshes, well, they should have, that should actually be all that it takes to clean up the meshes, really. So if I run, oh, oh, right, I forgot I moved it over here, but yeah, now if I close, great, no errors when it's closing, so everything's being created and cleaned up exactly like it should, and that's great. Now all we have to do is deal with the file name problem. What happens when we try loading two meshes with the same file name? And here's how I'm going to do it. I'm actually not going to do anything fancy. I'm just going to have a hash map. So I'm going to a static hash map, of course. Private static hash map. It's going to map strings to mesh resource. So see, that's really all I'm going to do here. I, I'm going to map the file name to the mesh resource that I've allocated for it. If I have a mesh resource for it, then, well, cool, I'll just use that. If not, I'll go ahead and init and load it and whatnot. But, but anyways, I'm going to call this loaded models. Sure. Sure. That, that's, that works for me. And of course, we need to initialize that to a new hash map of all this stuff. And I'm going to copy and paste because I'm lazy. And there. Great. So now, with that, all we have to do is change our constructor right here a little bit. Before we try initializing the mesh data and loading the mesh, what we want to do is we want to say if loaded models dot or better yet, I can just get it directly. So I can have some mesh resource, I'll call it short old resource. And that that'll equal loaded models dot get at the file name. Now, if old resource isn't null, that means, hey, we have already have some model that we've already loaded, and it already has its GPU resources out there. So we can just say, well, buffers is going to equal old resource, and we can say, oh, that's a good point, actually. Okay, we're actually going to have to modify this a little bit because, well, the size is kind of an important factor. We're going to need that to, you know, draw any of the old stuff. But for now, I'll just leave it like this. So, yeah. So we got the buffers. Eh. If it's not null, we'll set it to that. Otherwise, we're going to create the new mesh. And we're going to say, loaded models. We're going to put... Oh, we should probably do this at the end. But otherwise, we're going to put a new key with the file name and whatever buffers we've created from loading the mesh. And there, that'll be a nice way to reuse all that data. That is, once we've actually, well, set up size, because that's actually an important part of the equation. So I'm going to move this in here, going to generate a getter for it. And there, that'll make this... Yeah, it'll make it be a little bit different, but oh well. So... Actually, I should probably create a setter for size, too. So, 
going to generate a setter for that. Whoop. No. M wrong thing. There. And if that doesn't work out, I'll refactor it in a moment. Oh, that's kind of nice. Now I can just replace the entire init mesh data function with just a call to creating a new mesh resource. So there, that yet another thing that's kind of nice. Okay, so here. I'm going to say buffers dot set size to the indices dot length because you know we don't want to well you know need to actually set it to something that's kind of important here buffers dot maybe buffers isn't, isn't the most appropriate name maybe we should change that name in a moment eh oh well anyways actually I think that's okay I think this should work so we can build and well, not debug, but it can run. Oh, and I... Oh, wait, no, I didn't forget. Never mind, because... Oh. Well, it seems to be working. It's not crashing. But yeah, the thing I... The thing is, this should do everything, because that's the... That contains all the essential me mesh data. It's all in the buffers. Maybe I should rename this, though. Maybe I should rename this to... Yeah, resource. There we go. And great! Now one thing to note is this doesn't actually reuse, well, data if you're specifying vertices and indices manually. There's, I mean, there, you can do it, there's ways to do it, it's just, I don't think it's probably worth it. If someone's really manually, explicitly putting in another mesh with the same, ver with new vertices and indices and whatnot, then they probably want a new mesh. That's, that's what I think. So anyways, let's test our thing to make sure it actually you know, isn't crashing. So, yeah, let's create... Hmm. Yeah. Let's add an object. I'm just going to create new game object dot add component whoop add component it's going to take in new mesh renderer <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to try initializing everything on one big giant line. And the mesh is going to be a new mesh with monkey3.obj and a material. There. And... Ooh! This gave me an idea, but first let's do this. So, yeah, this should add a new object with all the appropriate data. And if we run... Hey, cool! We got another monkey! And they should be cleaned up just fine. Actually, you know what? Just for fun, let's create a new material for this thing as well. So, yeah, let's create another material. I'll call it Material 2. Yeah, not, not particularly creative, but oh well. And I'm going to set the texture to bricks.jpg. Some texture I, I'm pretty sure I've already put in here, otherwise it's going to end badly. And, oh right, I'm not using it. <laughs> so if I actually use it, I should see two different monkey heads, each with a different texture. Excellent! And one final thing, just because the setter right here is bothering me, I'm gonna take in the size as a parameter. So, yeah, in the constructor. So, really, that's. Yeah, that way I don't have to have the setter, which can theoretically screw things up. It shouldn't, but I don't like that theory. <laughs> And yeah, so I'm just going to move the initialization to right here. New mesh resource taking in indices.length. And... Ah! Wait, what? Oh, no need to... I want to get resource there, because that... Well, yeah. So now if I build... And hey, I saved an unnecessary allocation, so... Yeah, now if I build and run... Everything... Yeah, it should do the same thing. And great! And that just leaves the final part of our mesh resource scheme, which is removing models from this hash map right here once all of the meshes that have them have been, well, deleted. So I'm going to copy the finalized thing from here just because I don't feel like typing it out. I'm going to put that in mesh right here under the constructor. 
and no, I don't want to import that. Hey there. So I've got the finalize function. What do I want to do? Well, I need to know have I need to have some way of knowing how many well models that are left. And I'm going to do this by reference counting. So yeah, it's a little weird having a reference counter in a garbage collected thing, but hey, it works. So I'm going to have a private int ref count in my rest resource thing, and this dot ref count is going to start off at one because, well, by creating it, we have one. And here's how this is going to work. I'm going to have some public void add reference, which is just going to do ref count plus plus, and public void, actually public boolean, remove reference, not remove, remove, remove reference, and that's going to do ref count minus minus, and it's going to return true if we're at zero, because if we're at zero, then well, all the references have been removed, so we can safely remove it from the models list. So yeah, in finalize, what we're going to do is we're going to say resource dot remove reference, and more than that, we're going to do an if check. If resource dot remove reference, and remember this will return true if there are no more references to this mesh, then loaded models dot remove. We're going to remove the resource from our list of loaded models, which may not contain objects of... what? Oh, remove by key! Oh! Interesting. Well, that complicates things a bit. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to keep track of the file name in the mesh. So I'm going to have some private string, file name, and when I'm initializing with a file name, guess what? This dot file name equals file name. Yes. And that's how I'm going to remove it down here. But what if I'm not initializing with a file? What if I'm initializing with vertices and indices and whatnot? In that case, I'm just going to say file name equals that. And here. And yeah, so. And I'm going to add a little and to this. If if we've removed all the references and file name is not empty. And in that case, well, there, that's all there is to it. So that should be doing proper resource management now. Now, of course, we won't see it, but does not call Ah, that's probably a good point. So... What? Well, I don't know about that. It, someone can, can try explaining that to me if you want, but I don't know about that super finalized thing. I'm probably going to look it up after this, so... Yeah, I wasn't, wasn't aware of that. So there. And now... Good. That everything should is being cleaned up as it should be. Finally. Except not finally, because I forgot something very, very important. Right here, in the case where we found some existing resource, what we want to do is we want to say resource dot add reference. We need to increment the reference counter because, well, we've got another reference to it. Yeah, it's a little tricky like that. But yeah, now that should be everything. So, yeah, with that, that really cleans up our discussion of meshes. Yeah, sure, you can get into more complex cases of animated meshes and whatnot, but just for your basic static mesh, this is really all there is to it. We've got a nice resource management system, we can load meshes in, we can draw them just fine, and yeah, sure, you can support more model formats or whatnot, but, you know, that's an implementation detail. We've got generic 3D meshes that can be put anywhere in the world, used for just about any purposes. And yeah, so that really finishes meshes for just about the entire series until we get into stuff like animation or more special case stuff. So yeah, 
Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned. And I'll see you next time, where we're going to start dealing with our texturing system. We're going to start cleaning up our texture system and doing... Well, we're going to enable some really powerful things with our texture system. <laughs> You'll see. So thank you. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned. And I'll see you next time.